Welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and today we're going to talk about 16 ways to motivate yourself to lose weight. I get asked all the time, how do you stay motivated? How do you continue throughout your weight loss journey, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose? How do you stay motivated to keep going? So today I'm going to give you 16 tips to do just that. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I upload new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Down in the description box, I will put nutrition coaching. It's almost the new year. It's time to have your personalized macros and calories done so you know exactly what you should be eating to reach your goals in the new year. I also have one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. I'll also link my favorite healthy things down below for you. So let's talk about 16 tips to stay motivated to lose weight. motivates us to lose weight can actually vary from person to person. And what you have to remember about motivation is it's fleeting. Motivation comes and goes. Did you know that motivation actually stems from results? So as we see results, whether it's in weight loss, in fitness, in our career, in our family, in our friends, in our relationships, that's what motivates us to keep going. And that is the same when it comes to weight loss. There's going to be times that you're motivated. There's going to be times that you're not. Sticking to a diet, sticking to a weight loss journey, sticking to a health journey, can be overwhelming. And a lot of us set these lofty goals for the new year and then we never complete them. Because we ultimately are setting ourselves up for failure, thinking that we're going to stay motivated throughout the whole year because we're not. There are some things though, however, However, the good news is there's some things that we can do to stay motivated. Number one, determine why you want to lose weight. You should always have a why behind your weight loss goals, your fitness goals, your career goals, your family goals. What is the reason why you want to achieve this? When it comes to weight loss, maybe it's so that you can have less chronic pain. Maybe it's so that your health improves. Maybe it's so you can get up off the floor when you're playing with your kids or chase your kids around the backyard. Listen, maybe it's because you want to look real good in a pair of jeans. Whatever your why is for losing weight, you have to keep that at the forefront of your mind. I think it's really important to write this down somewhere and put this where it's visible for you because it's going to help you stay motivated and connected to your why. And when we have a goal or a reason to do something, it's a lot easier to stay motivated to get there. Tip number two, have realistic expectations. You're not going to lose weight overnight. You didn't gain it overnight. You're not going to lose it overnight. And in fact, you're not going to lose five or 10 pounds per month. You may if you do a crash diet, but the weight loss isn't going to stay off. So there's zero reason to be completely motivated doing a crash diet just to gain the weight back again. Make sure what you're doing is sustainable for you and have realistic expectations. Plan on half of a pound to about one and a half pounds per week. This is healthy weight loss. This is slow weight loss. This is fat loss. This is what is going to stay off long term. Term. You're not going to work out seven days a week, so don't set that as a goal for yourself. You're not going to go right out of the gate and drink a gallon of water every day. Don't set yourself with unrealistic expectations. Make sure whatever goals you set are challenging for you, but are also doable because that is what's going to keep you motivated. Number three, focus on process goals, not the end result. Don't say at the end of 2024, I'm going to weigh this amount, or I'm going to lose this amount of pounds per week, or this amount of pounds per year. Set process goals goals. Losing weight is a process. You start with baby steps. One thing leads to another that leads to another that leads to another that leads to the end goal. When you say I'm going to lose 50 pounds in one year, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure because you have no control over how much you're going to lose in that year. You don't have control over the scale at all. So setting up process goals, goals throughout the process is a lot more reasonable. We like to identify these as SMART goals. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. Some examples of SMART goals or process goals include things like, I will walk briskly for 30 minutes five days next week. I will eat four servings of vegetables every day this week, and I will only drink one soda this week. These are measurable goals, they're SMART goals, and they're process goals. We're not saying I'm going to walk 30 minutes a day seven days a week. We're saying I'm gonna shoot for five days this week. I don't know what next week looks like, but this week I'm shooting for five days. So make sure that you have process goals, not end result goals. Number four, pick a plan that suits your lifestyle. 
Again, don't do a crash diet. In fact, don't do a diet at all. Find something that is sustainable for you. Whatever you do to lose weight, you have to do that to maintain that weight loss. So if you're going to do keto to lose weight, you better plan on doing keto for the rest of your life to sustain the weight that you lose. And that's honestly not doable for most people. There's days we're going to want bread and cake and cookies, okay? I eat dessert every single day and I've lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss. Macros and calories has been a game changer for me. It is what has helped me lose my weight and keep it off long term. I'm not on a diet. This is my lifestyle. So determining what is a lifestyle for you and what is doable long term will not only take the weight off, but keep you motivated throughout the process. Number five, keep a weight loss journal. And in Top of that, keep a food journal, but keep a weight loss journal. Have a food journal or a weight loss journal that's going to help you write that allows you to write down your emotions. How are you feeling? What were the triggers when you maybe overate or chose foods that weren't healthy that particular day? Write those down in a journal. In addition to this, make sure that you track your food. The only way to know how many calories you're eating, protein, carbs, fats, whatever you're following is to track your food. Whether that's done on an app on your phone or whether you hand write that down, whatever works for you. Have a food journal, Track your food and then have a journal that you can put your emotions down. Going back and looking at this when you're struggling and seeing what you did in the weeks that you were successful, food related, emotionally related, that's really going to help you stay motivated throughout your weight loss journey. I personally track in the Lose It app. I find it to be user friendly, accurate, and sustainable for me. I do have a journal where I journal my thoughts and journal the emotions that I'm having and kind of what I'm noticing in my body and on the scale that can help me stay motivated throughout the weight loss journey, especially when things aren't looking so hot or when the scale's not cooperating, I can look back and see what I did in past weeks to be successful. Number six, celebrate your successes, not the end goal. Again, this is a process goal. We're not gonna say when I lose 100 pounds, I'm gonna do this. How about celebrating yourself for every five pounds lost or 10 pounds lost or what I did throughout my weight loss journey is I celebrated every decade. So whenever I got out of a weight decade, so from 200 to 190 to 180, you get the drift. Whenever I went out of a weight decade, I treated myself. Maybe it was something really simple like going to Starbucks for coffee or getting a pedicure. None of my goals were food related. All of my goals had to do with taking care of me and celebrating my success. When I reached big goals like 50 pounds lost, 100 pounds lost, getting under 200 pounds, I celebrated with something even more something a little bit bigger. I bought myself a new pair of shoes because I wanted to be able to run and do 5Ks, which I do every single month now. I bought myself some jewelry. Maybe I bought myself a new eyeshadow palette or my favorite shirt. I bought myself something and celebrated my success every weight decade and then really celebrated those big milestones. Having these little celebrations along the way is going to keep you motivated. Number seven, find social support, whether that's on the internet or in your personal life or both. If you didn't know, I have a Facebook group. It is free to join. There's about 27,000 amazing people in my Facebook group. It is very supportive. It's a place to get support, get guidance, to be with people that are like-minded on your same weight loss journey, to get motivation. You can join it for free. I'll have it down below for you. I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching if you want my individualized support. And I am starting group coaching coming in January as well. All of that information is on my Facebook group. So definitely come join us there, but find a way to get some support. Find like-minded people who will support you in your goals and your efforts. And then people in your real life, whether it's your spouse, your family, your friends, that'll help keep you motivated. Maybe you find a gym buddy that'll get you to the gym a couple times a week. Whatever that looks like for you, it's really important to have support. Number eight, make a commitment. Make a commitment to yourself to reach your goals. Again, whatever those goals are for you, whether it's weight loss, weight maintenance, fitness, whatever those goals are, make a commitment to yourself and stick with it. Remember how I talked about in the beginning how motivation comes and goes and that motivation comes from results? Guess what leads to results? Consistency. Consistency equals results, which equals motivation. So make a commitment to yourself to be consistent in whatever goals you have. Number nine is huge. Number nine is huge. And this is to think and talk positively to yourself. None of us has a perfect body. Okay. None of us, none of us is beautiful in every aspect. None of us looks in the mirror and thinks that we're perfect. None of us look in the mirror and think we're perfect. There's always things that we want to work on, but one of the things you can do to really stop motivation is talk negatively to yourself or think negative thoughts. 
Positive mantras, positive self-talk is really, really important. When you look in the mirror every single morning, come up with one thing positive about yourself. It may not even be physically related. It could be something that you did, a goal that you've achieved, something that you said to someone that brightened their day. Talk positively to yourself every single day. Make it a goal to say one nice thing about yourself every single day. And remember to focus on positive thinking. Again, we're not gonna be perfect. We're not gonna stay motivated all the time, but we can certainly think positively and talk positively positively to ourselves throughout our journey. Number 10, plan for challenges and setbacks. Weight loss isn't this. It's a lot of this. Our emotions are a lot of this. Our success is a lot of this. Our motivation is a lot of this. Plan for that. It's not going to be smooth sailing. You're going to do everything right and not reach your goals. You're going to be really crappy and reach your goals. There's going to be a lot of setbacks and things that happen throughout our weight loss journey that you have to set yourself up for, that you have to plan for and be prepared for so that those setbacks don't derail you from your goals. There's a lot of stress in our lives. There's stress we can control and there's stress that we can't control. Stress can lead to demotivation. So I want to share with you some things you can do to help manage stress. Exercise is great for stress. Practice your breathing. Take a bath. Go outside and get some fresh air. Call a friend and ask for help. Also plan for holidays and special events. Those are going to come and go throughout the entire year. And just because you ate at a birthday party and had cake and pizza doesn't mean you're going to gain weight. It doesn't mean you've derailed your progress or you've screwed up. There's no bad or good food and holidays and special events are going to happen and you want to be part of those. You need to be able to work those into your way of eating, into your diet. And if your diet prevents those things, it's time to find a new diet. Number 11, don't aim for perfection and forgive yourself. Give yourself grace. You're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. You're not going to be perfect throughout your entire weight loss journey. Like I said, it's going to look a lot like this. So you have to give yourself permission to make mistakes, to screw up, to gain weight, to not reach your goals, to not be motivated, to not go to the gym. Give yourself permission to do those things and give yourself some grace when you do those so that you can go, okay, I had a little bit of a setback. I made a little bit of a mistake. I derailed my progress a little bit, but I'm going to get right back to it. Again, that positive self talk is so important. Giving yourself grace and recognizing setbacks and learning how to navigate those is crucial. Number 12 is something that's really hard. Like it is easier said than done. Even for me to this day, after losing 140 pounds, after having skin removal surgery, I still don't love my body. There's a lot of things about my body that I'm like, ugh, I wish I could change that. But we need to learn to love and appreciate our body the way that it is, wherever you are in your weight loss journey. Maybe you have 100 pounds to lose and you hate everything about your body. Find something you love about it and focus on that. Maybe you have great boobs. Maybe you got a nice booty. Maybe your waist is small and trim and you carry your weight in your hips. Find something about your body that you love and appreciate in the moment. And as you lose weight and as as you go throughout your health lifestyle journey, find other things you love about your body. Your body is never going to be perfect. Even people who we think have a perfect body still don't love their bodies. It's important to again, give yourself grace, positive self-talk, find something about you that you love. Maybe you have the most beautiful eyes in the world and that's the thing you love most about yourself. Focus on that and don't focus on the things that you want to change. Those things will change as you lose weight. Number 13 is really important and this is to find an exercise that you enjoy. That's going to vary from personal to person. For me, I get up at 4 a.m. to go to boot camp three days a week. I love my boot camp. It has transformed my body. It's become my community of friends. It's become something I look forward to. I also love lifting weights in the gym. I could do it every single day. I don't want to ride a Peloton bike. I don't want to go on a treadmill. I don't want to go on an elliptical. I don't want to do cardio in a gym. That's not something that's sustainable for me. Now, that may be something that you love. Maybe you love your Peloton classes and it's what helps you lose weight and stay motivated and it's an exercise you'll stick with. That's that's what we need to do is find something we enjoy. Now you might be thinking, I don't like exercise. There's not going to be a single exercise that I enjoy. That could be the case, but find one that you know that you can stick with. Maybe that's simply taking a walk every day. Whatever that is for you, you've got to find something you enjoy or at least that you will be consistent with because consistent leads to results, leads to motivation. Number 14, find a role model. Find someone you look up to, someone that you want to emulate, whether that's fitness related, weight loss related, personality related, find a role model, someone that gives you motivation, someone that when you watch their content or you talk to in real life or you see their photos, 
motivates you. Find someone that you want to use as a role model. You don't even ever have to tell that person that they're your role model, but you can find somebody that you want to emulate, that's done what you want to do. Someone relatable and positive. Having a good role model is really helpful. Number 15, this might not be doable for everybody, but that's get a dog. Dogs need walks. Dogs need walks. Dogs need to be played with. I know for me, I throw my little French bulldog the ball 10 times a day. We're outside, we're running, we're playing, we're throwing the ball. Get a dog to get in your movement. If you struggle the, finding the motivation to take a walk, having to walk your dog is all the motivation that you need. That baby needs a walk. That baby needs to play. Maybe you walk your dog to the dog park so that your dog can run around. Getting a dog not only gives you companionship, gives you someone to love, gives you someone who loves you unconditionally, but also can be really beneficial for your weight loss. And number 16, and finally, is get professional help when needed. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to struggle mentally. It's okay to struggle physically. And it's okay to seek help when needed, whether that's from a friend, a family member, or professional help. It's okay to ask for help. You're not bad. You're not broken. You're not crazy because you think seek therapy. Therapy can really help get this right, which helps get this right. So if you need professional help, definitely don't be afraid to ask for it. So those are the 16 ways to motivate yourself to lose weight. Like I said, motivation comes and goes, and the only way to stay motivated is to see results, and the only way to get results is to be consistent in whatever that is. Exercise, fitness, food, weight loss. Do what you have to do to see results so that you can stay motivated. Let me know down below, do you have any other tips and tricks that have helped you stay motivated throughout your journey? And if you enjoyed today's video, and of course, if you found it helpful, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, turn your bell on so you never miss a future Tuesday or Thursday video. Again, check out Nutrition Coaching. Again, I have group coaching. Join my Facebook group, get all the support you can, and find someone that you can use as a role model. If that role model is me, let me help you reach your goals through one-on-one -on -one coaching. Whatever you have to do to stay motivated, figure out a way to do it because that's what's going to lead you to success. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye friends. Yeah.